Hey everyone, uh, this is Dr. Mungli. So today I'm going, I'm trying a new thing to explain to you about uh, beta oxidation of uh, fatty acids. So I hope uh, you like this kind of uh, presentation. So this is a new approach I'm trying to use here. So both using a video and also a static writing over the slide. And also I have, a, I, I have made a, a model a presentation or something like that to explain beta oxidation of fatty acid. Let's begin uh, beta oxidation of fatty acid now. So as you know this beta oxidation of fatty acids generally we use a even number carbon fatty acid in explaining uh, beta oxidation of fatty acid. So I have written a even number carbon fatty acid here. So you have a methyl group and a carboxyl group and in between you have a hydrocarbon chain and this hydrocarbon chain can have n number of carbon atoms. So basically this is the general, general structure of an even number carbon fatty acid. So now let me quickly explain uh, the numbering of carbon atoms in uh, even number carbon fatty acid. So we have this carboxyl carbon as number one carbon and then we have number two carbon, number three carbon and like this number of carbons can go on. One of the way to uh, number this, the other way to number this is see the uh, second carbon that is just uh, besides carboxyl carbon is referred as alpha carbon and the third carbon is referred as beta carbon and so on and so forth. Now we are studying about beta oxidation. So basically in beta oxidation, so there will be oxidation that will be going on over this beta carbon. That is why it is called as beta oxidation and at the end of beta oxidation, there will be breakage of bond between alpha carbon and the beta carbon. So oxidation of beta carbon will be going on at the end of beta oxidation the bond that is present between alpha and beta carbon is broken down and two carbon molecule will be released. That's what is all about beta oxidation. Now let's, uh, so before a fatty acid undergoes beta oxidation, so it has to be activated first. So the activation of fatty acid will be done. So generally the long chain fatty acid will be activated over the outer mitochondrial membrane. So the outer mitochondrial membrane, we have long chain fatty acyl-CoA synthetase and that is what this fatty acyl-CoA synthetase which will be located over outer mitochondrial membrane and that's going to add CoA to fatty acid and you get fatty acyl-CoA. As you can see here, CoA is added. That is an activation of fatty acid. In order to add CoA, acyl-CoA synthetase, it's going to use ATP and break it down into AMP plus PI. It means when, whenever ATP is broken down into AMP, we take two ATPs being consumed here. And this is important point because whenever we calculate ATPs that are coming from oxidation of fatty acids, so we need to consider two ATPs that are consumed in the activation of fatty acid, you need to take them out from the total number so that you get a net number of ATPs when you calculate it. So remember, any fatty acid that undergoes beta oxidation, so it has to be activated. For long chain fatty acids, we have a acyl-CoA synthetase located over outer mitochondrial membrane, whereas for medium chain and short chain fatty acids, this acyl-CoA synthetases they will be present in the matrix of mitochondria. So we have specific acyl CoA synthetases for short chain, medium chain and long chain fatty acids. One of the point uh, that you should note here is you need to note that two ATPs are consumed for every fatty acid being oxidized. That's an important point to Note, sorry, now for every fatty acid that will be activated, so you need two ATPs. So two ATPs will be consumed there for activation of a fatty acid. Now, this particular slide is giving you all the four reactions that are involved in oxidation of fatty acid. So I have given here a activated fatty acid with n number of carbon atoms. So this will be there in the mitochondrial matrix. 
So the very first enzyme that is involved in oxidation of fatty acid, beta oxidation of fatty acid is acyl-CoA dehydrogenase. This acyl-CoA dehydrogenase, there will be specific acyl-CoA dehydrogenases for short chain, medium chain and long chain fatty acids. We have short chain acyl-CoA dehydrogenase, medium chain acyl-CoA dehydrogenase and long chain acyl-CoA dehydrogenase. So whatever the kind of acyl-CoA dehydrogenases they are, so they need FAD and note that FAD is coming from riboflavin. FAD is reduced into FADH2 and this FADH2 is equivalent to 1.5 ATPs if it gets into electron transport chain. Now acyl-CoA dehydrogenase what it does it is going to introduce double bonds between alpha carbon and beta carbon. So the molecule is delta 2 transenoyl CoA. Now the second enzyme in this reaction is enoyl CoA hydratase which adds water to the beta carbon here. So the water is added at the beta carbon. So now the beta carbon is undergoing oxidation. Now the third enzyme is beta hydroxy acyl CoA dehydrogenase. This enzyme needs NAD as a coenzyme and NADH plus H plus comes out. It means Hydroxyl group at the beta carbon is oxidized into keto group. So NADH plus H plus is generated and if this goes into electron transport chain, it is worth 2.5 ATPs there. Now the beta hydroxy acyl CoA dehydrogenase which is converting a beta keto molecule here and that is further converted to a uh, fatty acid with uh, two my negative means uh, n minus two carbon atom n minus two here and a molecule acetyl CoA released. This job is done by beta keto thiolase enzyme. So overall, at the end of these number one, two, three, four reaction. This is number one, number two, number three, and number four. Four reactions here. At the end of four reactions your fatty acid is converted into fatty acid with less two carbon and carbons and two carbons are released as acetyl CoA and your rest of the fatty acid with the two carbon less in number so it will get back into one more oxidation process basically this fatty acid here will go back into first reaction same thing will go on number one two three four so in the next step so there will be release of two more carbons as carbon dioxide, sorry, as acetyl CoA molecule, okay. So this is what happens in beta oxidation. So every time, so you are, you are removing two carbons as acetyl CoA molecule. Now let me demonstrate to you how exactly the beta oxidation is going on. So for that, I have a uh, models here. So basically, I have these colored skippity uh, pawns. So there are 16 in number as you can see here there are two in uh, each of each two of, of the pawns are in different colors so like that I have arranged 16 pawns here in a line okay. So what I do here is so I am going to oxidize this 16 carbon fatty acid this is consider this is a 16 carbon fatty acid here. So this 16 carbon fatty acid so it is undergoing oxidation now. So there will be oxidation of 16 carbon fatty acid. Let's see how the oxidation goes on. So consider first oxidation reaction is going on. So all those four reactions that I have explained in the previous slide. So that is first enzyme acyl CoA dehydrogenase and then we have enoyl CoA hydratase then beta hydroxy acyl CoA dehydrogenase and then we have beta ketothiolase. At the end of number one, two, three, four reaction. So your two carbons are released as acetyl CoA molecule. So you got acetyl CoA, one acetyl CoA molecule. Rest of the fatty acid is now having 14 carbons. Okay. And this 14 carbon fatty acid will undergo again second spiral of reaction, sp second spiral of beta oxidation reaction. So number one, two, three, four reactions will go on and two more carbons will be released as acetyl CoA molecule. Now you have 12 carbon fatty acid. This 12 carbon fatty acid again it gets into beta oxidation process number one two three four reaction note that this 12 carbon 
it is a medium chain fatty acid now all the enzymes in beta oxidation they are specific for medium chain so we have medium chain acyl coa dehydrogenase which will take care of this medium chain fatty acid at the end of number 1 2 3 reaction you are releasing acetyl coa two carbon molecule now you have 10 carbons left so that will undergo spiral 1 2 3 4 so acetyl coa released and now you have left with uh, six, uh, 8 carbon fatty acid. So at the end of 1, 2, 3 reaction, so one more acetyl coa released. You have 6 carbon fatty acid. So at the end of number 1, 2, 3 reaction, so 2 acetyl coa released. So 1 acetyl coa released. Now you have 4 carbon fatty acid left here. This is a short chain fatty acid. So this short chain fatty acid will be taken care by short chain acyl coa dehydrogenase in the mitochondrial matrix. This will be the final spiral in a fatty acid oxidation. It means at the end of number 1, 2, 3, 4 reaction, there will be two acetyl coa released. Okay, so like this, at the end of there are seven spirals in oxidizing a 16 carbon fatty acid. So, you are going to get eight acetyl coa molecules. So, those eight acetyl coa molecules are arranged here. So what will happen to these 8 acetyl coa molecules in mitochondrial matrix? So acetyl coa is initially they will undergo TCA cycle to give NADH, FADH2 and all that and they will give effectively a 12 ATPs that is a rounded number because 1 NADH plus H plus actually it gives 2.5 ATPs if you round it off we are rounding, rounding it off to 3 ATPs. If you consider rounded number of ATPs for NADH and FADH2, you get 12 net ATPs from 1 acetyl coa. If you consider exact numbers, so you get 10 ATPs from 1 acetyl coa molecules. Okay, so this is how beta oxidation process will go on, uh, go on and break down uh, 16 carbon, 20 carbon or 18 carbon or 14 carbon fatty acids into their individual uh, number of acetyl coa molecules. Now let's uh, re, uh, uh, look at some of the important points that are associated with beta oxidation of fatty acids. So acyl coa dehydrogenase it needs FAD as a coenzyme and note that this FAD is coming from riboflavin. So whenever there is a riboflavin deficiency that can give rise to decreased activity of acyl coa dehydrogenase enzyme. Now, the beta hydroxy acyl coa dehydrogenase it needs NAD as a coenzyme. So, whenever there is so NAD is coming from niacin, it's a de derivative of niacin. So, whenever there is a deficiency of niacin, it means there will be decreased activity of beta hydroxy acyl coa dehydrogenase. Now, among all the beta, hydrox, uh, beta oxidation enzymes, one of the most common enzyme that is congenitally deficient is medium chain acyl coa dehydrogenase. So, the medium chain acyl coa dehydrogenase deficiency is the most common deficiency out of all beta oxidation enzymes. So, MCAT deficiency and uh, there are so many other disorders associated with beta oxidation. Probably, I will come up with... Uh, disorders associated with the beta oxidation in my next video.